So to start off, we have this circuit here, which is the SPO2 circuit. It's been tested, it's been built on breadboards and has been shown to be working fine. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this and convert it into a PCB. So before we can even get started on designing a circuit board, we first need to figure out what we're going to use with that circuit board. Right here we have the schematic for the circuit, but the schematic can't be converted directly to a PCB because these are just symbols. These don't actually represent parts that we would use physically on the board. So what we need to do is we need to go through each of these parts in what's called the footprint table and we need to tell the editor exactly what kind of parts we're gonna use and what kind of dimensions it has. So let's start off with something simple. Let's start off with these three capacitors here, these 100 nanofarad capacitors, which on the schematic are these three right here. So we click on this, and over here on this left-hand table, we have the capacitors, surface mount, through hole, and tantalum. We want this to be a through hole board, so we're gonna click on the capacitor THT. And on the right-hand side, we have here all the different types of footprints for capacitors that are available in KiCad. So we can take a look at one of these by clicking one, right clicking, go to view selected footprint, and this will show us a representation of that. And if we click on this button here, we can see a 3D representation of what the capacitor would look like. But unless you have a specific restraint you're working around or there's some other reason why you need to choose the footprint before the part, generally you should do it the other way around and find the foot, find the part and then match that part to one of these footprints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for some 100 nanofarad capacitors. Um, I'm going to go to my distributor. You can use DigiKey. You can use um, whichever distributor you want. If you want to go into Octopart, you can find parts, you know, a listing for that. But for, for this video, I'm just going to keep it to a single uh, distributor to make things easy. So I want a 100 nanofarad capacitor, which gives these results here. I want it to be a multi-layer ceramic with leads. So I'm gonna click this one, scroll down a little bit. I want it to be in stock, normally stocked. And in these, these filter tables here, we're going to pick out what kind of capacitor we're looking for. And this has, this has all the dimensions, this has the type of capacitor, what its ratings are. Um, for this, because it's just for button demounting, it need to be anything special. So it can be 50 volts or under. Um, the tolerance doesn't really matter. Lead spacing, I would say five to 5.8 millimeters is good. Um, and from there we can click on apply filters. And I can scroll down a little bit and we can click this button here to sort by price. And scroll down again. And here we have a bunch of different capacitors that we could choose from. In this case, we have this one here, which is in stock 16,000. And if we click on that, this is what the capacitor would look like. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see this is a five millimeter lead spacing and 50 volts DC, 100 manifarads. And that's that would work, that's perfectly fine. So now that we select this part, which looks really good because it has a pretty good inventory, it's a good price, it meets the requirements we need. Uh, we need to, from the data sheet, take the dimensions for it. So this has a five millimeter pin spacing for the leads and the dimensions for it are four by 2.6 millimeters. So going back to our footprint editor, I can select all three of these at the same time actually. And even though I said it's a radial capacitor, we're actually gonna choose a disc capacitor because it says the footprints work better. And we said it needs to be a five millimeter pitch and it's a four by 2.5 or 2.6 millimeter. So the closest matching one would be this one. So this is a 4.7 by 2.5. So it's not exact, it's a little bit larger than it needs to be um, and a little bit smaller on the width, but honestly, this is fine. Um, so you can just double click on that and set all three of these to that capacitor. And we can right click on it and uh, view the selected footprint. And this is what it would look like when we lay out the part. And I can click uh, this button here for the 3D viewer and just sort of get a, a general idea of what it would look like on the board. So if that went a bit too fast, let's do those same steps again, but this time for the resistors. So these are the four 1K resistors. We can, uh, if you can just, you can click one of them and hit hold shift and click the bottom one. It'll select all four of them at the same time. And that's fine because they all need to be the same anyway. So we're going to, on this left-hand pane, scroll down 
to uh, the resistors through hole right here. And on the right hand pane, we have the listing of our resistor footprints. So uh, same as before, I'm going to go back to our distributor. I'm going to type in 1K resistor. Um, at the bottom here, I'm going to choose uh, metal film through hole resistors. And I'm gonna scroll down a bit. I'm gonna choose 1K for the resistance on the filters. Uh, power rating is, it doesn't really matter. Um, half a watt is fine. Um, tolerance doesn't matter. And I would say the only thing that really does matter, and this is just a personal preference, I would make the resistor above six millimeters just as a convenience for soldering. Um, of course, when I say that the uh, things like power rating and tolerance don't matter, that's just for this particular part uh, in this circuit because it's not really gonna be passing much power and it doesn't really matter. Um, if you have a specific load that's required to be handled by that, you wouldn't wanna set the appropriate power rating. And you know, if it's a precision device, you maybe wanna select a more precise uh, tolerance. But for now, for, for this purpose, this is fine right now. So as long as the length is set to above six millimeters, I'm gonna go down here, click in stock, normally stocked, and click apply. And scroll down, I'm going to press the sort by price. And let's scroll down again. And right here we have our results. Um, these ones here, these top three, uh, you can see they're sold by the real and you need a minimum purchase order of at least a thousand for most of these. So we don't need to worry about that. It's not gonna work for us. This one right here though, minimum purchase is one, um, which is listed right here. Um, it's 10 cents per resistor until you you know buy multiple of them in bulk, then the price goes down but I really need four of them, so it doesn't really apply to us. So I'm gonna click on there. It's 45,000 in stock, so that should be enough. Um, so we're gonna look down here. We have axial 1K ohm, quarter watt, 1% tolerance, um, and a length of 6.3 millimeters. So this would work perfectly fine. The only thing to keep in mind is with the 1% tolerance resistors, they come in this blue color, which sometimes if you're colorblind or have issues with seeing blue light, um, that can be hard to, to deal with. So if you're looking for something easier to look at, uh, look for like a 5% tolerance. But I think this will work fine. So we need to remember it's 6.3 millimeters long, 2.4 millimeters wide. So if I go down to our footprint editor again, I have all those selected. So we want a 6.3 by 2.5 and the pitches are going to be about 7.62 horizontally. So that would work fine. So if we click the footprint, look at it, this is what it would look like. This will be fine though. So I'm just gonna double click on that, set all four of those. And this is the process. You go through parts each one at a time. Um, you know, since we chose this one, I'm gonna add four to our shopping cart, click buy. And we would just keep doing this. We do this for the LED, the push buttons. The only thing that we wouldn't do it for is the Arduino and these two right here, which are the modules, the screen and the SPO2 module. This is a little bit different, but since we really only have two more parts to assign, just the buttons and this LED, we might as well knock those out pretty quick. So I'm gonna click on LED, scroll down to LED through hole. And normally you're going to want to either pick a 3.0 millimeter or a five millimeter LED. I'm just gonna pick a five one, double click on that. On Mauser, we don't really have to worry a whole lot about that because five millimeter LEDs are very, very common and we can just click standard LED through hole. Uh, in stock, normally stocked. Now, if there's a particular color you want, you can choose your illumination color here. I'm just going to stick with something like red. Apply filters. And go scroll down, sort by price. And there we go. That looks perfectly fine. 16,000 in stock. So I'll just add one of these to the cart. And now we have our LED selected and the rest is just these uh, three buttons here and they're all gonna use the same part. So I'm going to shift select all of them. Go scroll up to um, button, THT. Now the buttons are a little bit a little bit more complicated just because there's some other dimensions you have to take into account for this. Generally, you're gonna to want to have a six millimeter button, which is pretty standard. They look more like this. So they're they're very common. Um, 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that one for all three of these. So back in Mauser, I'm going to type in six millimeter button, press enter. I'm going to select tactile switches. Down here, I'm going to select in stock, normally stocked. I'm gonna scroll over a bit. Mounting style is gonna be through hole. And we want it to be uh, over here on the width and height, we're gonna select six by six millimeters. And we'll click apply filters. Scroll down a bit, and there we go. We have the buttons we want. So now that we have our results for these buttons here, I'm gonna click just the first one. This one's fine, six by six millimeters, the six millimeter height. So we can just buy three of these. But now we're kind of stuck. What we have left right now are the two custom modules we made. And now we have to decide what kind of footprint do we want to assign to this part? Because this is a custom part, KeyCat has no idea what this part actually looks like. So we have to tell it what it looks like. And there's two ways we could do that. We could go and search through all the different footprints here and try and find something that would be compatible. For example, a pin socket would be compatible. If I take a look at this, this is where the module could just plug into the board but it doesn't have the actual size of the module. So the, the actual module is gonna take up a lot more space than this. So instead, what we can do is we can define a custom footprint. And in the next video, I'll show you how to do that.